Well, hello, my YouTube friend. Uh, tonight, I'm gonna make <laughs> a video about that knife that I just received today. I'm laughing because the I think that the new themes of my video are gonna be like the the the, the brutal video. I mean, the one that that I do like in the heat of the moment when I just received the knife. Uh, I did that from with my conductor. Uh, from uh, JB Blount, the previous video that I made, and I'm gonna do the same with Ron Best and maybe the same with, <laughs> with the other knives to come. There is absolutely no reason to wait uh, uh, to make any videos. I just need to have some time, and luckily I have some. So this is where I think, when I think I should make my videos, like right now, in the heat of the moment, when the passion is at the the highest. So I'm going to discover the knife with you. Actually, it's going to be almost like the unboxing because I literally just received uh, uh, the knife uh, and I didn't have much time uh, to look at it, but we're going to discover it while doing that video. So that knife comes from Ron Best. Uh, you know what? Uh, first of all, right off the bat, the packaging, look at that. Pelican case, Ron Best knives, put it outside like that, just great. You can receive some great knives from great makers. You want to see what's inside? You really? <laughs> A teaser? Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah, you can receive great knives from great makers and usually they yeah, they can put you like some cheap packaging. This one is not cheap. So now, the reveal. Woo! <laughs> when my daughter received the knife, she just opened, she did the unboxing, you know, on, on Instagram this morning. And she was like, the, the instantly when she got the knife in hand, she was like, oh, Daddy, that's the best knife I've ever seen. It's my favorite knife of yours. I mean, like, instantly. And you know what they say, you know, uh, the truth is, uh, I don't know if you have the same expression in English, but uh, in French, we say that the truth uh, comes from uh, the mouth of the children. And this is the absolute truth. This knife is by far by far the best knife, the best looking knife I've ever had. It's, it's all over the place. I mean, it's like, oh, you have Mother of Pro. We're going to talk about that full time ask a frame. I mean, it's all over the place, but it's again, a pure piece of art. It's not going to be a knife that I'm going to use. Uh, to me, that's the level of Stan Wilson. And uh, are you ready? Woo! <laughs> yeah, it's the, the, the level of craftsmanship that you can find with the guy uh, like Stan Wilson. And that, I mean, Ron Best uh, has... Uh, the nature gave him uh, the best last name you can ever find because uh, he is certainly uh, the best uh, tactical maker, tactical knife maker. But it's not... I mean, let's not resume the guy to tactical knives. I mean, he's doing art knives, doing daggers, uh, uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, he's starting, he started with art knives. And I think that uh, uh, what defined him the most is uh, being actually an art knife maker. But he does also tactical knives, as this one. Uh, but of course, uh, you <laughs> don't expect me uh, to use that knife or any other uh, guy that owns a Ron Best knife. I'm not going to uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that they won't use that knife as an EDC or if anything that knife should be used to kill your peers <laughs> that, that look at that how how wicked uh, uh, shape you have here uh, uh, even before going to, to, to the details of the knife how wicked that knife is man what a oh, what a, what a looker uh, it's incredible so that's the phase three so yeah a word while looking at the knife and at the details that we're gonna discuss about, a word about Ron Best. Uh, from what I gathered, and I spoke to the man on the phone, the guy uh, has started making knives or, or you know touching knives when he was a little kid. But uh, uh, as a true knife maker, I think he started uh, uh, like in 2006 or seven, something like that. But for the better part of his life, I think he's 40, something like that. 40, 41, something like that. Uh, maybe, oh, 45, sorry. <laughs> he's 45, he's born in 72. Uh, and yeah, like I said, he's, all his life he's been around knives. You know, he's been working in the concrete uh, as a family business, from what I understand. But he's been into knives forever, and you can tell. But you know what? 
when I saw first his knives, the, the first thing that came to my mind, as it came to probably a lot of you, uh, and a lot of you that are uh, just looking at that video while I'm rambling, the first thing that comes to mind is, oh man, come on, uh, uh, it's all over the place. Certainly, oh, uh, what a work uh, uh, of machinery. The guy must be a machinist or something like that. Uh, um, crazy work uh, uh, of uh, CNC involved or whatever. Uh, are you ready, my friends? Yeah, if you are, bear with me. This knife is... Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? <laughs> because as of now, I even cannot fathom how it can be. So that knife, my friend, is a 100% custom knife made. It has absolutely no CNC involved. Barely a little milling machine. A pantograph that you just bought, but just to do... Uh, the engraving inside for it for the name that's it other than that a small milling machine a lot of sweat a lot of hours he spends 15 hours a day to work on a knife and it takes a week seven days to make a knife like that so seven days working fully 15 hours a day to make that knife and uh, it may look a lot but believe me uh, probably the guy is really crafted because <laughs> without CNC, without machinery, to get that result in seven days, even if were, even working like 15 hours a day, it's just incredible. The guy is insane. I'm not sure that the light is the best to do that video, but like I said, I'm going to try to use maybe this to enhance the details, because now we're going to check the knife and the details that we have here. Yeah, no, it's shitty. <laughs> let's uh, let's do that that with that lightning. So there are so many details that I, I will probably omit a, a lot. So let's start with the art. After that, we're going to talk about the mechanics or, or or whatever. But let's talk about the art because it's already six minutes and forty seconds now. So we have here uh, the presentation side is a full Timascus uh, frame. So what do we have here? Timascus here and Timascus here. As you can see here, there is a kind of line that you have here, you see? And when you look at it like that, it may very well look like you have here one piece of Timascus and here a kind of overlay of Timascus because of the cut, because of the difference of color, but not at all. That's one single piece of Timascus and uh, you have uh, the impression that it's two pieces, but it's because it's a dual a double annotation. Here it's kind of bluish and uh, purple, and here it's kind of bronze uh, uh, and blue and purple. So very much it looks like there are two pieces of Damascus. Then you have this piece uh, of titanium with the custom pivot, uh, anodization in brown here, purple inside, uh, bronze here, sorry. Look at that, how, how he managed inside here to be like only bronze. I don't even understand how it can be only bronze underneath this piece of titanium. Then you have this other piece of titanium. Just for the heck of it, I mean, the, all the, the details are just driving me nuts. Why put, I mean, you, you don't have enough with <laughs> that piece of Timascus, uh, those mother of pearl uh, inlays. You have to put another piece here of titanium, another piece here of titanium. But not only that, in that piece here of titanium, you have this beautiful, a uh, purplish thing that is Charwatt. So it's you see here, it's very well controlled and it's not like something plain. You know, look at that. You have a lot of, oh man, it's it's a big piece of Charwatt. So Charoid or whatever. It's a stone that has this beautiful, beautiful pattern in it and beautiful coloring. It's mainly purple. Beautiful. So. And as you can expect, of course, there is absolutely no gap between the mother of pearl inlays. Um, all the junctions are absolutely flush. And again, here it's not a junction, it's just a cut. Look at that. It's, 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 it's amazing, amazing. The details here are amazing. Then you have this kind of raw finish. It's very much, as you can see, it black. And it has a texture in it. Uh, kind of raw and textured. It's here on the piece of Timascus, but you're going to find it here also on the on the blade, on the Damasteel, and you find it elsewhere. I don't remember where, but we're going <laughs> to we're going to. There are so many details that that is just incredible. You see here this raw part, here another cut here with the raw part, insane. Now let's go to the backspacer. Now, 
uh, let's see if yeah, you can stay like that. The backspacer here, it's one piece of titanium. And look at that. You have a triple anodization inside. The line in the middle is blue. The cuts here are purple. The on the, on the sides, on the edges, it's bronze. So bronze, blue, purple, uh, th three anodization. And look at that. You have a hole here. What the, all the holes all the way around. A cut, a kind of groove on the inside. You have the blue, the blue finish here. So look at that. How crazy is that kind of work? It's it's just insane. The details are just insane. And look at this backspacer. Here it's totally bronze on the edges, as it is here on the edges here. And you have the two holes here for the lanyard. But who would want to put a lanyard on that knife? That is just <laughs> silly. But it's here for those of you who want that. Now, let's check the other side. Now, check this clip. So it's one piece of Timascus also. The design is, is insane. The cut here is just absolutely <sighs> silly. Look at that. And then you have here another cut. So it almost looks like you have two parts here. Almost like you have one part of Damascus and two parts here. And, and there is a kind of, of pattern here uh, between that clip and also the handle. It, like here you have the Mokutai frame and here the subframe lock. So it looks like there are two pieces. Here. There are two pieces here actually. And it's kind of, kind of looking alike. You see one piece here. Like the, this almost looks like the representation of the subframe lock. You see what I mean? This would be the frame. This would be the subframe lock. This is the frame. This is the subframe lock. I, I don't know if I make myself clear, but this is how I, I look at it. On the clip also, you have those cuts here with the raw part. So here it, <laughs> I, I didn't remember when it was again, but here you still have the cuts here with the, with this dark and texture finish. Insane. I've, this is the first time that I see something like that on a piece of Mokutai. So the clip is insane. One here, oval, one hole here. I mean, there is not a dot here when there is no uh, something really special. And then here you're going to have the subframe lock. Man, with the cut inside of subframe lock and also those this finish with the, the dark and raw finish. And again, this piece of titanium with the bronze in underneath. It's just absolutely insane. 12 minutes, I want to show you <laughs> that blade. So the action is something that drives me crazy. The detent is literally unbreakable. I don't know how it gets to, to get that because that, that blade is humongous, over four inch, I would say. Uh, and still you have a detent that is literally unbreakable. And the action is so, oh man, it's just insane. Insane. The centering is spot on. Look at the blade handle ratio. Look, uh, something that I want to discuss about uh, really quickly. A lot of knife makers, they do uh, uh, knives with a kind of discrepancy between the handle, the, the handle length and the, uh, the blade length. Look at that here. It's aligned with the handle. You have the most blade length for the handle it, that is just possible. Insane. Perfectly centered, as you can expect. Action, as I told you, is great, fantastic. Very early and secured. You have the steel insert, of course. All the details inside with the, the, the engraving and the, the finish that is really reflective uh, uh, inside. Uh, look at this blade. A full, I mean, how wicked is that? And that's a full hollow. And the contrast that you have with the black of the damas steel and the shiny part is just insane. You, I mean, it's almost, uh, you see the reflection of, uh, here. It's the, the finish is just insane, and you're not going to see not even a scratch, nothing. It's just beautiful, and, and absolutely no bump. That is a full hollow grind, my friend, from here, that point to that point. Uh, laser sharp, as you can expect. The cuts here, I absolutely adore, you know, here, the cut that you have here. It, it brings so much wickedness when you look at it like that. It's not like a, it's, it's almost a swedge, but it stops here, you know. It's not a full swedge, but just that takes a lot, a lot of work to achieve. Oh man, I'm, uh, you know what? It's already 15 minutes. I, I'm, I'm, we are heading to the 15 minutes. So I'm gonna leave it at that. It's just like, it's such a beautiful piece of art uh, that it's just what you needed to see all, like all the details. Uh, uh, but mechanically speaking, it's just a great knife. I mean, if it was not that all over the place like that, it could be a user, it could be a, a whatever you want it to be. But it, to me, it's just a pure, pure piece of art. And I'm absolutely overwhelmed. And 
Oh man, I'm gonna try my way, find my way to get another knife from him. Maybe a pure art knife because that guy is driving me crazy. Driving me crazy, that is the work of a genius, my friend. And if ever you have the chance to score that kind of knife, man, uh, uh, jump on the occasion. This is something that you will... Unique. That's it. Simple as that. So I'm going to leave it at that and I will catch you very soon, my friend, for another video. I hope that the quality uh, of the video will give it justice, but I'm not sure. Bye-bye.